What to do, YouTube? Sorry for the wait. We've been experiencing some technical difficulties. If we still are, please be sure to let me know in the comments section. Uh, but before we get started in the video, I did want to say, because I've been looking over the comments. Well, I always look up over the comments, but the main thing that keeps on coming up in the comments section, because we've been going back and forth about Austin Jackson for the past couple of weeks, ever since the draft stopped, is Austin Jackson has a year to develop his craft into being a, a starting left tackle. Plus two is not going to be playing in 2020. So we don't need to be worried. I saw that like more than a dozen times in the comment section. And I'm like, seriously? So what about the other quarterbacks that the Miami Dolphins have on the roster that possibly are going to end up playing in 2020? Brian Fitzpatrick and Josh Rosen are just going to just get murdered. <laughs> that's that's what y'all think. Well, some of y'all think. I'm not going to say the majority, but you know I keep it 100. I, I had to get that off my chest. I just I just felt that was ridiculous. That's number one. Now, let's get to Larry Warford, who has been a consistent conversation over the last couple, over the last week. To be honest with you, folks thought that he would have signed with a team by now, but obviously he hasn't. Now, here posed the question. Should the Miami Dolphins pursue Larry Warford, the ex-New Orleans Saint? Now, I did a little bit of recon because I had I had to see why exactly he was released. Because, you know, when you, when you read the headline, it says such and such has been released. Well, excuse me, such and such time pro bowler player name has been released by such and such team. When you see Pro Bowler there, they're sitting there, and he's still kind of young. He's 29 years old. He'll be 20. Well, excuse me, he's 28, but he'll turn 29 in June. You kind of, kind of thinking about it for a second, like what, what, what was the reason why they end up cutting? Him? Now, doing, looking at the recon though, some of the Saints folks and the people who've talked about the Saints have said that he's his sal his salary was too much. He was supposed to be getting what was it? I believe it was $12 million for 2000, 2020 season for the New Orleans Saints. Also, they have somebody waiting in the wings to take over that particular spot at guard uh, because of the fact they drafted Cesar Ruiz. To be quite honest with you, New Orleans Saints fans, I can't stand y'all right now because that's who I wanted the Miami Dolphins to get. I wanted Cesar Ruiz for the, at, at center. I wanted that so bad. I really did. Um, and also his play in the playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings but when you think about his play in, in the, against the Minnesota Vikings I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't think they would go to that extreme for cutting him for one game I wouldn't I wouldn't think any team would cut one, a player for one game unless it's a kicker unless, unless it's a kicker unless it's a kicker that misses a crucial field goal that's the only reason I would condone that but yeah, I'm I'm not gonna read too much into the playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings. People have bad games, but I I'm, I I strongly believe it has more to do with the fact that they bought in Caesar Ruiz, and they have somebody at the guard position that well they have have confidence in to take over that spot for a cheaper price because nine million dollars that's that's kind of a lot of money for offensive guard. Now moving forward, now Larry Warford is looking for seven million dollars a minimum a year, I believe, but. Thinking about it, I was like, mm, if you look at the Miami Dolphins' current roster, yes, Larry Warford, he's a pre, he's a good guard, three-time Pro Bowler guard. Again, I I, I want to iterate, I want to reiterate this because when I look when I think about Pro Bowlers, like it's a popularity contest. I don't read too much into Pro Bowlers. It's funny how he became a Pro Bowler when he became with, with was with the New Orleans Saints. And did not make a single pro, pro, pro Bowl when he was with the Detroit Lions when he was drafted. So, I, I don't read too much in the Pro Bowl. But anyway, when I look at the Miami Dolphins' current roster right now, as far as the offensive, go, offensive line in general, Michael Dieter last year, he took the majority of the snaps at guard. Jesse Davis, he took the snaps at tackle. And Shaq Calhoun took took some snaps at, at the guard position too. That, that left guard position was more a back and forth type of type of deal. It's a lot of, it was a revolving door as far as players being put at that particular position. Now in the 2020 free agency, we went out and got Eric flowers. He could play guard. Excuse me. I was about to, I was about to say he could play tackle. He's not versatile up to play tackle. He he's terrible at tackle. We were just going to specifically say that Eric flowers is a guard. 
We brought him in from the New York Giants. He played a fairly decent job with the New York Giants. If you think about it, we went out in the draft and drafted Robert Hunt in the second round. He's versatile enough to play tackle and guard. We bring in Solomon Kinley in the fourth round. Honestly, I'm not going to read too much into Solomon Kinley unless he's, he impresses me in pre excuse me in training camp and preseason and leads into the into the regular season. I'm really not going to read too much into Solomon Kinley. Let me get back to Robert Hunt, though. Scouts have said that Robert Hunt could be a day one starter, right? But he could be a Pro Bowl caliber guard if he played guard instead of tackle. Now, I did pose the question in the comment section. Where would you prefer Robert Hunt to play at, tackle or guard? The majority have said at tackle. Now, again... I don't, I don't see a fit for Larry Warford. I understand what the Miami Dolphins are trying to do. We're trying to establish a run, a run, a running game with this offensive line, bringing in a whole bunch of maulers to sit back and run defensive players over while we're trying to trying to run the football. But I felt like Michael Dieter last year. I feel like he didn't get his fair shot at the guard position. I, I like Michael Dieter. I feel like he just I feel like he just didn't give his fair shot at the offense offensive guard position. Like it was just trash. Straight up trash on the offensive line last year. You really can't point the finger who is who, but I feel like he deserves another shot. So to be quite honest with you looking at it, hey, we we pretty much full at the offensive guard position. Now Let's get back to Austin Jackson real fast. That at tackle, that is most definitely a priority of need because again, I'm not sold on Jesse Davis whatsoever yet. Well, how long has he been with the Dolphins? Since 2017, I don't think we ever. I'm ever gonna be sold on him. So yeah, I'm not sold. I'm not sold on Jesse Davis yet. Austin Jackson, maybe he can. Maybe he can improve. Uh, over the course of OTAs and us going into training camp, I don't know. Maybe he's holding something back and is just and, and, and it's gonna be ready to go by day one to start for the Miami Dolphins. Who knows? Julian Davenport. Who knows? But another player that has been consi- has has been consistently coming up over the past week has been Jason Peters. Now we talked about Jason Peters, I believe. Had it been around the free agency free agency time when I said I really wanted the Miami Dolphins to do one more thing in free agency with a sign of veteran tackle, and that was Jason Peters. Now, when you look at Jason Peters, Jason Peters has been a top three tackle. I was about to say the best tackle, but he's been a top three tackle over the past what twelve years in the league. Like that's that. It, him, him coming into the if for the Miami Dolphins would be a perfect fit. The man has been like again, he's been one of the best tackles in the league for several years. We have a young offensive line. To be honest with you, I think our oldest offense offensive lineman right now on the current roster is stuck between Jesse Davis and Eric Flowers right now. So we need some type of veteran leadership to come in there to show Austin Jackson number one how to play the tackle position the right way or at a NFL type caliber level. And along along with all the other offensive linemen that the Miami Dolphins currently have on our roster, and plus him coming in there, you solidified a left tackle the left tackle position for how old is he? Like in his forties for like the next three years. So that'd be a perfect time for Austin Jackson to come in there and and do his thing. But again, Larry Warford, I just don't see him. I just don't see. I don't see the fit for the Miami Dolphins bringing him in, especially for the salary that he's asking for, seven million dollars a year. I know that's not too much, but considering the amount of depth that we have on at the guard position, I can't believe I'm saying this right now because <laughs> I'd be like, if this was a year ago, I'd be like, yo, I, I'll take all the help we can get right now. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know what it is. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is a great one, DeVore. I'm up out of here.